Hey everybody, welcome to Jen Lowry Writes. Today, guys, I've got Polly Harris here with us on the show. Polly, thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you for having me. <laughs> guys, I love Polly's book. I am so thankful that I had an opportunity to read Swipe Right for Murder. Look at this one. <laughs> what an awesome cover, too. Just Yes, I have my little... Oh, a copy here. Yes. <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you, Polly's got a gem with Swipe Right for Murder. It is a rom com, a murder, mystery, serial killer. The humor is there, the darkness is there, and the twist. Polly, that's all I'm gonna I'm not gonna give spoiler alerts, but I'm just gonna tell you guys. It is such a fast paced read. Like you won't want to put it down. And when you get to where you're going, it takes you on a completely different place and you're like dropped into a different GPS. Like you don't even know. <laughs> and I loved it, Polly. Loved oh it. God, thank you so much. So I'm going on about her book and I actually need to introduce who Polly is right now, guys. Um, she is the author of six YA novels and runs her own editorial company where she works on books just like Swipe Right for Murder. When Polly is at writing or editing, she can be found cuddling her cat, professionally known as her editorial assistant, which you can hear meowing in the background. So I hope yes. you're darling. What's your cat's name? His name is Leonard. Oh, Leonard. I hope Leonard comes. And I hope just by calling his name, he comes in. Uh, crafting or swiping through dating apps. We got to yes. talk about that with personal experience <laughs> in this book. Um, but let's just go ahead, Polly, and talk about behind the scenes inspirations for Swipe Right for Murder. Yeah. Um, Swipe Right is probably one of my favorite books that <sighs> I've worked on. It was just like super fun to write. Um, and it's definitely based on my own experiences. Um, not no, the serial not killer had, part. Yes, I have not had any, like, you know, near death experiences. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. Um, and I'm sorry for but, anybody out there that have, may have had a traumatic experience yes, with exactly. dating apps. My cat is right here trying to knock over my computer. See? Got yes, Leonard. See? Here. Here. I'll show him now before he decides to run away somewhere else. But. This is him, oh, my little editorial assistant. Oh, he's, uh, he's in a mood, so I'm going to let him go, but he's here. <laughs> absolutely lovely. Thank you for joining the show, Leonard. Yes, yes, thank you, Leonard. <laughs> um, but yeah, my um, swipe right was definitely just sort of based on, um, I realized that I'd been on so many, you know, Tinder and Bumble and just like online dates that, um, and so many of them are just funny or go wrong and are just awkward. And I was like, you know, this just needs to be a book. And um, and then I just threw murder in the mix. So. Might as well. In a college, well. in a college setting, yes. which I absolutely love stories that are kind of set in that area. And then mm -hmm. you also threw in a bookstore. Yes. <laughs> which is like everybody, sorry, has maybe a secret dream of uh, Working in a bookstore, a library, a coffee so, shop. I mean, sure. come on. Yeah. Us writers out there just to be surrounded by books all day. I'm gifted, uh, blessed to be able to do that with my literacy coach job. I'm surrounded by books all day. Um, but just being in that environment, too, with the bookstore, was that like mm -hmm. part of this story? Yeah. Yeah. I sort of just felt I need, I mean, one, she needed a job and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to give her the perfect job, which yes. is working at a bookstore. So, and then, and then poor Georgie, I mean, one thing after another for that girl, exactly. and she's just I like know. in the wrong place at the wrong time. And yeah. just poor Georgie. That's all I've got to say, guys. Just poor Georgie. You yes, need to read this book. You <laughs> need to characters. read this. I know. You read to read it. So <laughs> when when we were first like talking about your book and I saw the concept of it, I was dying because I actually <laughs> met my husband online. Oh, and we've God, been married it. for like six years. But oh. the but like the whole like prior to meeting my husband and all of those kind of the dating apps and checking mm -hmm. everything, I was there too. Yeah. And so I could find, you know, the, after all is said and done, I found the love of my life. But, you know, after all is said and done, you could look back and you could say, yep, I've had that awkward feeling. Mm -hmm. Yep, I've had that really strained thing that just was 
no, like no. So yeah. it was just great experiencing it through that lighthearted parts. But then the dark gets dark, dark, quick. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. How it was did super you fun. talk about balancing that? Because that was yeah. crafty, girl. You just oh, crafted that you. so well. How did how did you feel about all that balance? Yeah, I really I went into the book really wanting to have this balance of sort of like really scary sort of almost horror and also mm -hmm. really funny um i think part of it is i um i came up with the title and i was like the title is kind of funny it's sort of tongue-in-cheek and so i was like i wanted to keep that sort of like um that balance of like it's scary but it's also you know we're poking fun at the whole dating process here um and yeah it was definitely kind of a tough thing to balance and I was a little worried about like oh you know if I throw in some humor is it gonna be like distasteful I don't know but um hopefully it, it worked out well <laughs> well there is dark comedy there is horror comedy out yeah, there exactly. rolling around you know we've got a lot of great examples of that going on right now but I but you know thinking back did you plot those points out when you were trying to craft and balance those those chapters and the way that it's just so perfectly placed or did you just fall into the story um i definitely am more of a plotter i um i tend to plot at least sort of the structure of the story pretty um pretty exactly and then a lot of the filler sort of just happens um so so yeah, I would say honestly, all of the thriller points were very plotted. All of the humor points were very um, sort of spur of the moment because I was like, oh, ah. this scene would be funny if I added this. Um, that's harder for me to outline ahead of time. Oh, I love that. So again, yeah. you talk about the balance. You did a balance mm -hmm. with your plot. Yeah. Yeah. Has, <laughs> so with you said this has been your favorite to write so far. Mm-hmm. Um, was the process a lot different? Were your other books into the, you know, horror comedy, rom com kind of serial killer kind of twist mashups? <laughs> or is this like a brand new thing for you? This is like a brand new thing. So I um, actually I haven't published. This is the first book I've published in seven years. Um, all of my books beforehand were much more sci-fi fantasy, um, much more of a younger audience. And then um, you know, like post college, it was very like focused on my job and like all of this stuff. So writing sort of became less of a, I don't know, I didn't have as much time for it. And so I'm finally back into it. And I'm sort of, I'm rebranding myself. So Polly Harris is a new name for me. I previously published under Pauline Harris. So I mean, same name, basically, but yeah. a little different. Um, so yeah, this is my first contemporary novel. So like set in actual normal times with normal characters, um, which was really fun. I was able to put more of myself into the story. Well, I could tell you have so much joy just talking Aww. about it. <laughs> yeah. I could I could feel the joy Aww. surrounding the process and now you're back. Seven yes. years. What did I it know. feel like? Like coming back on the scene after kind of being, you know, your other things that you've got going on in your life too. But mm -hmm. as the author stepping in seven years later, like how was that? Yeah, it was um, really different. I um, And part of it, so I wrote this book a few years ago and I actually had a literary agent for this book. And, um, and so, I don't know, it's self-publishing because Swipe Right for Murder self-published is very different from traditional publishing in that um, you can do things much quicker. And so with my agent that I had at the time, the book was out on submission. It was, you know, making the rounds. And that's just a very, very slow process. And, and I kept getting feedback um, sort of asking me to maybe rewrite it to be for a younger audience, which I just personally didn't think would work. I was sort of like, well, they have to be adults they have to be in college it has to be a little bit more mature just because of the nature of the story um and so i'm glad that i did it on my own because i was able to keep the things that i wanted and um and also just publish it the way that i wanted and, and much more quickly <laughs> and you and with having that control you also have the freedom 
too, mm -hmm. yeah. to work within the space of the book and then honor the story the way that it was given to you, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now that you're seven years later, I still mm -hmm. want to talk about that because oh, things yeah. change so much. Like in the industry, like before when you were out promoting and marketing, mm -hmm. a lot of the opportunities weren't there seven years ago. And yeah. now, like, talk about the difference in that and how did you have to kind of rethink and when you're rebranding, what were some of those thoughts that were coming to your mind? Because you could really help out a lot of other authors out there with some tips that are maybe just, you know, kind of revitalizing their work or starting over after a while of maybe just, you know, having other priorities take over. Like, how was all of that with the change? Yeah, it really felt like starting from scratch again. It's like so weird because I'm like, like, you know, I, I am an author. I published lots of books. I've done this before, but it was like, oh, that was a long time ago. And, and yeah, it's like starting over. Um, so I did a lot of just, you know, research, listening to different, um, you know, podcasts and YouTube videos and researching and reading. Um, and then sort of what I, I came down to is that I need to look at my books like I look at my business and that it's um, it's something that you put time and energy and money into and that's how it's successful um, and so I'm really sort of in the process of you know figuring out where to invest my money in and in terms of marketing and all of the things that go along with that so um, yeah oh. No, yeah, Leonard again. is here to stay. <laughs> He's here again, yeah. <laughs> Let Leonard stay. I can live vicariously through through that that house right now with a cat. Yes. Cuz I can't have a cat, but yes, please. Just just let Leonard stay. It makes me happy. Um so yeah, because like social media even is just mm -hmm. so different. The whole landscape yeah. just feels so different. It does. Yeah, and I actually had um a lot of um, success with working with bookstagrammers, which wasn't really a thing before. <laughs> yeah, I just, I reached out to as many bookstagrammers as I could. And I was like, hey, do you want like an arc of my book? Like, I'll just send it to you. Um, and then around my release day, I had um, probably a couple hundred people posting about my book on Instagram. And I was like, this is great. This this was not a thing, at least that was on my radar back when I did this before. Um, but yeah. And so how was that with just all the, the cold emails, sending all of that out? Was it a little, yeah. was it a little <laughs> like nervous? I'm, I'm just so proud of that boldness to go yeah. out there and really push your story forward because we, yeah. we are the champions of every book that we write. Yeah, it's true. I, um, Surprisingly, I've gotten very used to cold emailing. So um, back when I was younger and I published my first books, I would, you know, send out query letters to independent publishers, like small presses. And that's how I originally got published. Yeah. Yep. And so, you know, you just have to keep bothering people until they respond <laughs> to you. Um, and same with being an editor. I would cold email publishing houses and see if they needed an editor or if they were offering internships. So at this point in my life, I um, am very comfortable just reaching out to random strangers and being like, hey, do you want to talk about editing or my book or whatever it may be? Well, let's talk about editing since you've brought yes. it up because... Yes. You know, talk about your services, your experience. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you've worked with me in the past with mm -hmm. a small press with yes. uh, Sweet Potato Jones and mm -hmm. just, you know, amazing work, you know, opportunities there. But tell me about how that's progressed for you over time. Had you always wanted to be the editor first or the writer first <laughs> or how did all it work? Yeah. So I started writing books when I was... Um, when I was 12. So my first, I know I was like, it's crazy to look back now and be like, Ugh. but anyways, my, my first books that I published with an independent press, I was 16. And so I knew at that point that I was like, this is what I want to do with my life. Like I want to work in publishing. And um, obviously as a 16 year old, I was like, I want to be an author. Like that's what I want my job to be. Um, but then, you know, as I got older and then I was in college and I, um, was getting a degree in English, I realized that, you know, making a living off of being an author is, is very difficult. And, um, 
And I thought, you know, editing would be just as good. You get to read books and get paid for it, which, you know, obviously wow. as a writer, I'm also a reader. Um, and so, yes, how did it work? I, I graduated college and my first employer was actually my publisher who had published my books in high school. And then um, I worked for a handful of other presses, including Month Nine Books, where we met. And um, yeah, eventually just kind of branched off into having my own editorial company where I work directly for authors. Sorry, that's my nice. dog. <laughs> oh no, all animals welcome here. We are yeah. all inclusive, trust. So so now you have your own editorial business. Yes. Ooh, talk about those feelings of branching out yeah. and just cementing your place there within the mm -hmm. publishing industry. Go ahead and talk about a little bit about that move. Yes. Yeah. So it was definitely, um, I'd worked for a few, I think four years at that point, um, for various different publishers. And so I'd learned a lot and, um, you know, it's kind of in the editing space, it's, you're a freelancer. And so I was like, unless I wanted to get a full-time job with like a large company and end up moving to New York city, which isn't really something I want to do. I like where I live. Um, and so I decided, you know, I'm going to create my own, um, my own editorial business and promote that and hopefully help authors directly, especially when it comes to, you know, presenting a polished manuscript to an agent or um, a publisher, which is super important. Right. And so yeah. you're doing, so you do content edits, mm -hmm. line edits. What is the pretty much yeah. your highlights of your services? Go ahead and talk about it because we might have some people out there yeah. right now who are going, yes. I need an editor that I can trust. I need an mm -hmm. editor that I know that I could have a great relationship with and could take care of me. And guys, Polly is amazing. So Polly, <laughs> like tell a little bit about your services too. Yeah, I offer, um, content critiques, copy edits, and proofreading. And um, my most popular service is probably a copy edit. It's very um, sort of middle of the road, especially if authors aren't really sure what they're looking for. Um, my, I always like to say my editing style is compassionate yet honest. So I'm very much like, I'll point out what's working, what's not working, what's wrong, like I'll fix things, but I'm gonna be really nice about it because as an author myself, like it's, I realize it's so stressful to send your book off to an editor and like you can feel so self-conscious. It's like, it's your baby. A lot of times your book is an extension of you. And so I'm very careful to, you know, realize that and be kind with an author's work. So. Right. So yeah. guys, you got it. So, so Polly with the editorial <laughs> service, then you've got your own novels that you're, you know, you've got anything mm -hmm. else on the work that you're writing right now um, for the future? Yes, I am writing another book in the same vein as Swipe Right for Murder. Oh. Um, yes, I don't have like a ton that I can say or that I want to say yet because it's um, still sort of oh, the yeah. process, but it is going to... <laughs> it's going to involve catfishing. So that's the, um, that's the premise of, of that. Uh, all right, Leonard, close your ears right now. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Love it, Polly. Love it. So going back and just really focusing in on Swipe Right for Murder. So you said it took you a while to get back into the writing phase. How long did mm -hmm. it take you to actually go back in and, and rework it? Because you said it that you had written it a while, like to make it mm -hmm. more 2021. Yes. <laughs> to put it out there with it, you know, fresh and current, like with a new set of like paintbrushes. Did you do a lot of that work before you self, you know, published or did you pretty much take the manuscript the way that it was when it was out for submissions? Yeah, I definitely changed it, um, changed it a bit. I initially wrote it during um, NaNoWriMo. I can't remember what year it was, um, but I love NaNoWriMo. This is, yes. I'm going to do NaNoWriMo for this next book. Oh, um, we got to talk about that oh, because yeah. the Sunday Killer is also a Nano baby, oh, and I yes, love yeah. Oh, we got to yeah, talk yeah. about Nano, but go yes. ahead. So you wrote it during Nano, love it. Yes, and so very much as you know, a whirlwind of like you know you get to the end and you're like, did I even just do that? Like it's it's crazy, and so um, 
Yeah, I ended up getting my literary agent actually did a content critique of it for me. And so um, before I self-published, I really took a lot of those notes to heart. And I um, were the major, I think the major rewrite was making Georgie much closer to the action. So um, I don't want to like give anything no, away. No, let's not. There's too yeah. many twists and turns. You've got to yes. experience it for yourself, y'all. <laughs> yes, but the, the original draft, she wasn't quite as close to all of the, um, the danger that was going on. And so that was a big thing that I changed. Nice. Put her right in the yeah. mix of it. Yeah. <laughs> let's just let's just break our characters apart. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Break them up. Break them up. <laughs> so I know that this has been something that you have found joyful because I truly do feel that. Mm -hmm. But tell me some things about maybe for authors like challenging moments. Mm -hmm. Maybe moments for you that you were like, wow, okay, this is new <laughs> or or this feels this way. How how you know redirection? Did mm -hmm. you have any of those moments as you were working through this one? Um, yes. And also I think I've had a lot of those moments over my time just as an author. Um, I think for the longest time, cause I've been published by small presses and I've also self published now with this book. And I think, um, you know, that's been over a decade of me writing and publishing. And for the longest time, I was always like, the big goal is to have an agent and be published by a big five company, right? And so, you know, when I had an agent briefly for a moment there, um, I was really excited. I was like, okay, this is, you know, where it's supposed to go. It's on track. Um, and then that ended up not working and I'm self-publishing. And I think it's important to realize that you know, your publishing journey might take, I'm so sorry. Like no, that. don't you dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> Leonard is, Leonard's like fine. Um, hey, that's a story in and of itself. That's a good blog right there. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's important to realize that your publishing journey might take a different um, path than you originally thought. And that's totally okay because I'm actually like so happy with, what I've done with the book and I can't really imagine it being any other way. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if that answers your question. No, that's a <laughs> wonderful answer. That is a wonderful answer, but that's also embracing your story so much mm -hmm. that, that yeah. you, you know, you're like, let's go with this. This is, yeah. you know, this is a path. Let's make this path work. Mm -hmm. And you've made it work. I mean, yeah. you, like the book is doing so well. You've got tons of amazing reviews. Yes. Like, oh. like it's just, it's such a great book though. Oh, so it, de oh, it deserves all, me. it deserves all the love that it's getting out there. And, you know, you're still sitting on some really good categories right now with your numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's looking nice, Polly. Just, yes. just <laughs> so excited for you and what you've got going on. I know um, when you look at your cover and, you know, you say that you like crafting. Is crafting digital art? Or did you go um, ahead and do some outsourcing for some things? I definitely outsourced for the cover. I um, am not a digital artist. I wish that was a skill that I had, but um, I don't know. <laughs> so crafting is more hands-on crafting. Yes. I do like um, like knitting and painting. <sighs> and, um, yeah. I've sort of realized that since my full-time job is very creative, you know, in terms of writing and editing, I was like, I need some other crafts that don't need to even be good, but are just like fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> And so with your painting, do you share a lot of your things online and all of your crafting? I, not really. Sometimes I'll share to like my personal Instagram or something. But um, part of it is I have now pushed myself to not, um, not feel like it needs to be perfect. Because I think <sighs> as a creative person, I'm sure you, um, I'm sure you relate. But, you know, you, you tackle something creative and you're like, it has to be the best you know, thing out there. And so with my hobbies, I'm like, okay, we're going to knit a scarf. And if there's a hole in it, that's fine. <laughs> the whole point is that you just had fun knitting this. Right. Um, yes. I had yeah. a conversation today with somebody 
about how much perfectionism just really can just put a damper on your life and just mm -hmm. slow you down almost to the point of where you feel a paralysis. Yeah. And, and, and I had this same exact conversation with someone today and they're like, okay, we got to talk more because I'm actually feeling a little better now. And I've got some now steps on what I can do, but I mean, you know, overcoming that mm -hmm. and, and not just with your hobbies, but with the author world too. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sure. I think my favorite advice that I've heard, and I don't remember who said it, but, and it's very common, it's um, write, like no, write like no one's reading. And I'm like, I try to remember that every single time I sit down and write because it's so true. <laughs> and so with Nano, you're just pouring that heart out right there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just getting it all out. So talk about Nano. So you got your project up yet already yes. on the site? Um, is it, yes, it's already up there on the site. Um, and I've already outlined most of it. I, there's a few little parts that I want to fill in, but the outline's ready. I'm just, you know, waiting for November to start writing it. Oh, I didn't wait. I'm already five in. I've started. Oh, really? Yeah, oh I've got, because I wanted to jump start a little bit yeah. while I had a little bit of pockets of time. So yeah, I built the, I built the first five to get myself rolling. So I have yeah. the you know the plot and everything. So then when November does hit, maybe I could get more than five in before then. I doubt it, but um, yeah, who knows? I mean, we still yeah. got another we got another week or so before it hits. But so yeah. so talk to me a little bit now that you know the book is out. You said that you're working on ways to best spend money with marketing mm -hmm. too, yes. but. And you've also reached out with Bookstagrammers and, and your your own podcast and, your, and you're you're making your spots. How difficult has it been though during you know the pandemic and the times that we've had you know to really try to get your work out there? Have you found it's just easier virtually? Um, yeah. So I've always definitely veered more toward virtual stuff. I'm definitely more of an introvert. I was never really into sort of book signings and stuff. Um, part of it is I do live in a very rural area, so there's not a whole lot. I mean, I, I, I would have to travel to really be in any kind of the city where <laughs> something would happen. Um, and I don't know, I've always found like making connections online really easy and really fun. And it's also where I have found most of the books that I right. read. So I'm sort of like, why wouldn't others find my book that way? Yes. So, yeah. and with all of the opportunities that are out there, like all mm -hmm. of the different, you know, the media outlets that you can hit. Yes. I mean, it's just, it's just so phenomenally huge. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much easier to be a self-published author now. <laughs> yep. And now, you know, to me, the whole climate too around publishing your own books has also changed. It has. Yeah. Yeah. And I think especially with authors realizing that editorial services are a thing that they can buy themselves because yes. it's like that almost like wasn't really a thing that was talked about 10 years ago. It was sort of like, how do you find an editor? Whereas now you can just you can find one and hire them and all of that. It's great. Because like you talked about having a polished product. Mm hmm. You yeah. know, having that polished product. Now you've got access to outsourcing for editorial services, for mm -hmm. for book covers, for interior design or, or whatever it is that you would need to help you, you know, take your dream and, and your work and, and everything and make it happen. It's pretty much there. Yeah, it's so exciting. Yeah. But I think for you, too, with that advantage of having those editorial skills, like yourself, yeah. like how was that like going back through and, and working your own piece? Like, how is that? <laughs> yeah. So super different. I like to believe that my books are a little bit cleaner than the average book when I send them off to an editor, but um, you still need to have your own stuff edited, even if you are like, you know, trained as an editor, because, you know, you just miss things, um, yeah. especially when it comes to less grammatical, even though that's a thing as well, but more meaning because, you know, when you're writing something, you know what you mean. And so you're assuming that your ideas are being conveyed correctly, whereas that's not always true. And so an editor is going to catch something that you wouldn't in terms of like, oh, this doesn't make sense. I don't know what you mean here. But yeah. So guys, 
I'm so, so thankful that you've taken your afternoon time to be here on the show with me so we could just talk loveliness about Swipe Right for Murder. Guys, Swipe Right for Murder. I need more coffee. That is <laughs> available where books are sold. You yes. guys really, look, it's just there so it beautiful. <laughs> um, just love it. It's a book that I know you're like, wait, Jen, you're hugging serial killer books. Yes, it's a book to <laughs> hug um, because it's just, it's just a great read. Oh, it's thank a, you. It's just such a great read. So, and if you're looking for an editor, guys, now you've met Polly. Polly yes. Harris is out there. <laughs> Polly, tell us where you stay out on social media so people can contact you, whether it's to check out Swipe Right for Murder or your editorial services. Talk to us about how people can connect with you. Yes, so my website is Pauline Harris Editorial, um, and then my Twitter is Pauline C. Harris, and those are the two main places that I'm at, so you can find me there. <laughs> awesome. All right, so Polly, thank you so much for joining me today yes, and sharing you. last words of wisdom to writers out there that uh, have a story to tell. What's your last words, Polly? Uh, yes, okay. I think... Um, I think kind of along the lines of what we talked about, get over your um, fear of perfection and be okay with um, be okay with a, a bad first draft and being okay with working on it. Love it. And sign up for Nano because yes. Yes. we're going to be there in November and it's just a wonderful time to celebrate words. November is yes. such a, it's a fun month and, and, why not join everybody else that's out there doing the nano work? Exactly. Because um, it helps also to build community. So, guys, we got another example of a nano writer here, Polly, with a book baby that's yes. now actually <laughs> out in the world and is being read by so many people and getting great reviews. So, thanks, Polly, for being here for Swipe Right for Murder. Yes, thank you so much. All right, much. guys. Y'all have a great day, guys. I'll check y'all out.